In a general meeting held in New York City, the United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed told the Security Council that terrorism is a major threat to international peace and security and that nowhere has the threat been felt more keenly than in Africa. Now, of course, Ms. Agony is at the core of many terrorist groups, ideology meaning that women and girls in particular are bearing the brunt of insecurity and inequality. The UN, however, has not yet found a solution on how best to eradicate terrorist activities within and outside the African continent. Maria Macham has the details of that in this report. The African continent is riddled with acts of terrorism carried out by various terror organizations whose activities have killed, maimed, and displaced countless thousands over the past decades. The economies of West African states of Mali, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Cameroon, and Niger have all been badly affected as a result of attacks by various terror groups. Women and girls have been abducted on several occasions and used in some cases as sex slaves or bargaining chips for ransom payments. The massive displacement of populations in both Mali and Burkina Faso has led to political instability, with both countries experiencing multiple coup d'etats which have further complicated efforts at a negotiated settlement to the security crisis. The desire by some countries to militarily defeat these terror groups have so far likely failed. Thus, the desperation felt at the UN on how best to work out a mechanism to eradicate this menace. Addressing the Council in New York, the United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed said that these groups have exploited instability to increase their activities across the continent. Terrorists and violent extremists including Daesh, Al-Qaeda, and their affiliates have exploited instability and conflict to increase their activities and intensify attacks across the continent. Their senseless, terror-fueled violence has killed and wounded thousands. Thank you. The situation in the Sahel and West Africa is particularly urgent, with some of the most violent affiliates of Daesh operating in the region. It has been observed that in the last two years, Violent affiliates of Daesh have been increasing their presence in Mali, Burkina Faso, and other countries. And Amina Mohammed says that the fight against these groups shouldn't be left to Africa alone. In the last two years, these groups have expanded across large areas of the Sahel, increasing their presence in Mali while penetrating further into Burkina Faso and Niger. They have also expanded southward into countries of the Gulf of Guinea that have so far largely terrorist attacks or have recently emerged from armed conflict. Mr. President, in today's hyper-connected world, the spread of terrorism in Africa is not a concern for African member states alone. The challenge belongs to all of us. The chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohammed, challenged council members to do more to bring about peace and security on the continent and not simply just make promises that never materialize. What has the international community, of which the Security Council is the linchpin, done on issues of peace and security? What precise answers have we given to the African countries that are victims of this aggression? Africa is tired of hearing promises and picking only disappointments. Faced with terrorism, the extent of which is known to have ravage the continent. Africa also deserves to benefit from the same prompt concern shown by its partners in other places and in other circumstances. The African Union leader also said that solidarity with Africa in its heroic fight against terrorism, unconstitutional change, food, education and health insecurity is an imperative international duty. The Managing Director for Common Security and Defence Policy and Crisis Response in the European External Action Services, Benedictus, noted that the insufficiency of efforts put into solving this problem and calls for more action. Yet despite our collective efforts to keep the threat of extremist groups at bay, we all have come to realize that this has not been enough yet. We find ourselves on the back foot in too many places, and we will need to do more if we are to be successful in the whole. Several other speakers urged the international community to strengthen its support for regional organizations 
and initiatives and funding for African-led operations. Delegates also pointed to the need to review the sanctions regime and United Nations mission mandates. Reporting for iAfrica News, 